PR Connections Radio presents... Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Kelly, And on this edition of Vegas Hockey Hub, we are going to be doing a look back and kind of doing a retrospective of, sh- of shorts. As uh, a little while ago, here before the season started, we did our top 10 prospects pretty much doing our first prospect watch of the 2023-2024 season, and I broke down the prospects that you needed to watch with your Vegas Golden Knights. I did 10 players that you needed to know. Now, we're going to be actually looking forward in time and kind of examining how those top 10 prospects performed, what was their stats like, how did they do alongside, you know, the Vegas Golden Knights and the NHL, the Savannah Ghost Pirates of the ECHL, Henderson Silver Knights in the AHL. For a few players who are still in the uh, Western Hockey League, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, the Western Hockey League, you know, somebody who's in juniors, we'll talk about them as well. But there is a lot of coverage and a lot of things we're going to be talking about on this edition of Vegas Hockey Hub as we are going to be looking back and kind of seeing how the top 10 prospects for your Vegas Golden Knights, performed in 2023-2024. And before we break this down, before we really get into it, we are going to be doing all of this on Vegas Hockey Hub. This is going to be a fun video to really talk about and break it down here on Vegas Hockey Hub on PR Connections Radio. Go to our YouTube channel at Vegas Hockey Hub. Click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell do not miss any update or any video we have on the network. We also have a YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We are everywhere on social media, so I highly recommend going to all of our content and liking that situation. Hey, you know what? Josh Bailey, my good friend, your San Jose Sharks have the number one overall pick, and come June, there is going to be a really good chance that they are going to end up getting the first overall pick and selecting Boston University's Macklin Celebrini. So going to be really interesting to see what your San Jose, Shark, San Jose Sharks do in the long-term future. But yeah, Josh Bailey, appreciate the uh, support there. Uh, you know, go Knights go on my end. I mean, Vegas Golden Knights. This is Vegas Hockey Hub. Now, getting into what the video is about and how the top 10 prospects, how did they perform for your Vegas Golden Knights? After all, we focus on the farm system. We focus on the young guys that are in the Golden Knights situation today. So we're actually going to start from the bottom, and we're going to go from 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then that's how this video is going to be kind of formatted at this point. So we're going to start out with number 10, and that is defenseman Joe Fleming. Now, defenseman Joe Fleming, he had a lot of hype kind of entering the season. This is somebody who is a bruiser, someone who's not afraid to scrap and drop the gloves when needed. This is a player in Joe Fleming who had a really interesting start to his career. After all, with Joe Fleming, he is someone who has been earning his way throughout the organization. This is somebody who was a undrafted situation. He gets picked up by your Vegas Golden Knights. He was in the rookie mini camp. He was doing the development camp. And I actually saw him during the rookie face-off, and he made an immediate impact with your Vegas Golden Knights during the rookie face-off. And he was on our number 10 when it came to the prospects for your Vegas Golden Knights. Now, Joe Fleming, he had a very interesting year in the ECHL. So maybe he doesn't know the ECHL is the double A affiliate in hockey. So you have the MLB, NBA, NFL, NHL. That's the premier league. That's the top league of, of hockey. Then you have triple A, which is the AHL, which is the Henderson Silver Knights. And then you have your double A, which is the ECHL. And that would be the Savannah Ghost Pirates. Joe Fleming was part of the ECHL this season. 
And in 58 games played, Joe Fleming, he had a trio of goals, 18 assists, which would be a tally of 21 points. His plus minus is negative four, but let's be honest, the plus minus in minor league hockey really does not matter as much as it would be in the professional leagues. A stat that does matter for Joe Fleming, however, is his penalty minutes. When I said that he is a scrapper, when I said that he is somebody who defends his teammates and drops the gloves, I meant that. As Joe Fleming racked up near 100 penalty minutes in the ECHL, and what a great season it was for Joe Fleming to get his feet wet, to really establish himself in the minor league system, and considering the age that Joe Fleming is, I think he's going to get better and better and better. Now, will I predict that he will eventually earn his way into the AHL and be an everyday starter for the Henderson Silver Knights. I wouldn't be surprised if next year that ends up being the case. However, because of what he did in the ECHL this season, Joe Fleming, him at number 10, he I think that he will find a way to stay on the prospect list and be a very good member of the Vegas Golden Knights development and in the minor league system for the next couple of years. So starting out at number 10, is Joe Fleming from the ECHL, from the Savannah Ghost Pirates. So he was the number 10 prospect entering the year. Now, somebody who really did not have that big of an impact this season and someone who I actually think could be taken off this list next year, that would be former second-round pick Danny Chaka. And uh, this is someone who had 58 games for the Henderson Silver Knights in the AHL, only racked up five points in the AHL. So when it comes to Chaka, this is somebody who unfortunately you just see him as someone who he he was a former second round pick. He comes over from Russia. He spent professional time playing in the KHL and with him now being a couple of years into North America and being in the AHL, I really think Chaka has not really developed to what he is supposed to be as a second-round pick. Now, five points in 58 games, that is not great. Now, I will have to mention that negative 25 plus minus. Now, once again, on an amateur level, on a professional level, when it comes to minor league hockey, your plus minus can be a very big indication, you know, not really of what you can be as a player, Now, 22 penalty minutes, that does mean that he does spend some time in the penalty box, but not a lot of minutes. So, for Chaka, this is just really a season where he was playing a lot of games, he was getting his feet wet once again here in North America, but at this point, when it comes to Chaka, him being the number 9 prospect, him being a former second-round pick by the Vegas Golden Knights, him only registering 5 points in the AHL and Henderson, is a bit underwhelming considering all the uh, high st- hype that was around him when he got drafted. And it will be interesting to see if he is still on this list next year. Uh, in terms of age, he will still be around here. But in terms of top 10, in terms of performance, it will be interesting to see when we do this list next year if Danny Chaka is still on this list. At number 8... We had a defenseman who just got on the radar with the Vegas Golden Knights. This is somebody who you actually might have not even known about because he was drafted in the 2023 NHL draft by your Vegas Golden Knights. He was only being taken a few months prior to this prospect watch. However, for the people who know about him, him being a third-round pick by your Vegas Golden Knights, him spending his first season in North America after being uh, leaving and going from Finland over to North America, him playing in the OHL for the uh, Sioux Greyhounds of the Ontario Hockey League. So how did R2 Karki do for your uh, Vegas Golden Knights in terms of his prospect status and what he did in his first season playing junior hockey here in North America? Well, I think his stats kind of speak for itself there as R2 Karki in 59 games in the regular season on the Ontario Hockey League. 
He registered more than 20 goals, had around 25 assists, and racked up around 45 points in the OHL. He also had a plus 15 in juniors, which is, you know, good for him. And then he stayed out of the penalty box, only registering around 10 penalty minutes in the Ontario Hockey League. And considering it is his first season playing in North America, I think he did a really solid job. As a matter of fact, just very recently in the Ontario Hockey League playoffs, he did score a goal in the Ontario Hockey League in the first round. We saw him rack up a goal in that game one. So really good start there for R2 Karki playing for the Sioux Greyhounds. So for Karki, him being a third round pick coming from the 2023 NHL draft, I will not be surprised or shocked if based on his performance this past season, he not only stays on the top prospect list, but you maybe actually might see him go up a little bit with your Vegas Golden Knights. So Definitely going to be a fun situation to see considering his age and how young he is once he was drafted back in 2023. So for R2 Karki, his first season in North America, 45 points for the Sioux Greyhounds of the Ontario Hockey League. That is a good job there by Karki. And before we get to number seven, just to do a quick recap as we're talking about the top 10 prospects from the Golden Knights heading into the year and how did they perform this season. At number 10 is Joe Fleming from the Savannah Ghost Pirates. In 58 games, he had 21 points. At number 9, you had Danny Chaka from the AHL Henderson Silver Knights. He only had 5 points in 58 games. And at number 8, you had R2 Karki from the Ontario Hockey League Sioux, Sioux Greyhounds. And he had 45 points in 59 games this season. And these next two players at number six and at number seven actually suited up for your Vegas Golden Knights. And they did split time between the AHL and the NHL. At number seven, you had former 2020 first round pick Brendan Bryson. And for Brendan Bryson, he had 61 games this season. When you split his time between Vegas and Henderson, he actually racked up 17 goals, 15 of them in Henderson, two of them in Vegas. He had 41 points on the year, which is a good job by him. And he actually did rack up a good amount of penalty minutes, majority of them in the Henderson Silver Knights. So overall, for Brennan Bryson, him having an accumulative 41 points in 61 games this year, Brennan Bryson has really kind of elevated his game. He has actually very well stepped up and kind of succeeded from what he did the year before. And uh, for Brennan Bryson, because he played enough games in the NHL, he is still going to be considered a prospect entering next year. After all, to no longer be a prospect, he would have had to play in 50 or more NHL games or get to the age of 26. So. For Brennan Bryson, it is going to be a next season. There's a chance that he actually still be on this list considering the qualifications for it. But for Brennan Bryson, it will be interesting to see how he does next year considering the rebound and kind of the potential he showed this season in 2023-2024. And at number six, this is a player who actually, once again, did split time between the AHL and the NHL. And funny enough, by the way, he actually had 23 games in the NHL and 22 games in the AHL, almost an even split there, and that is Caden Korzak. Now, Caden Korzak, in 45 games played this season, two goals and 17 points. Now, he had a very solid plus 12 in the NHL with your Vegas Golden Knights, and he did rack up a decent amount of penalty minutes this year, with around 30 penalty minutes between the NHL and AHL combined. For Caden Korzak, he was called up to the NHL to be on the second line when Shea Theodore got hurt. And then Caden Korzak was a second top defensive pairing in the AHL with the Henderson Silver Knights. Caden Korzak has really become a solid everyday player in the Vegas Golden Knights system, regardless if it's the AHL or NHL. He is someone that you can count on 
to be an everyday member. Now, with him being 23 years old, with him being a former second-round pick in the Vegas Golden Knights system, it'll be interesting to see if he has one more season of being a prospect or if he's going to make that full elevated jump to the NHL next year. Obviously, there's a lot of decision-making and a lot of stuff that out of, out of his hands that he is going to have to figure out when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights organization. But overall, Caden Korzak, he did a really solid job between the NHL and the AHL this season. And I like what we saw when it came to Caden Korzak and his potential between Henderson and Vegas in 2023-2024. Now, getting into the top five between your Vegas Golden Knights and the top prospects and how they performed in 2023-2024. And at number five, we are going back to the juniors. We're actually going to stay with the Junior Hockey League. And we're actually going to stay in the Ontario Hockey League as we talked about the Sioux Greyhounds and R2 Karki back at number eight. Well, at number five, we have Mateus Sapaleev as he came from the Saginaw Spirits of the Ontario Hockey League. And in 54 games this season in the Ontario Hockey League, he had around 20 goals, racked up over 40 assists, and had 62 points in the Ontario Hockey League. So a really solid job by Sapaleyev to have over a point per game in the Ontario Hockey League. That definitely deserves a round of applause for Sapaleyev. Now, he also had a plus 24 plus minus. That is a solid job by him. And he only racked up around 20 penalty minutes. So he did a stellar good enough job to kind of be around the penalty, mo penalty box, but not consistently in the penalty box. Now, for Sapaleyev, there is some speculation, and I would not be surprised if he does make the jump from the Junior Hockey League to the minor leagues next year, regardless if that is in the Henderson Silver Knights of the AHL or the Savannah Ghost Pirates of the ECHL. But I think after this season, his junior career should be up and he will make the successful jump to the minors and be on the Golden Knights, Silver Knights, or Ghost Pirates organization heading into 2024-2025. So for Sapaleyev, I really like what we've seen from him. And this is somebody who's going to stay on the top 10 list as he is, was only drafted very recently with the Vegas Golden Knights. So considering he is not in the NHL yet, he has actually earned a spot in the top 10 prospects heading into next year. At number four is a player who actually spent the entire season in the NHL and there's actually a player who has graduated from the prospect uh, circle. So at number four, we have a player who thankfully for him has earned a roster spot in the NHL. He has earned an ability and be able to actually play in the NHL. And he has graduated from the top prospect. And that is at number four to begin the year. And that was Pavel Dorothyev. Now, Pavel Dorofiev, he only played in 38 games for the Vegas Golden Knights. But man, he racked up a dozen goals, had around 20 points at the end of the year, and had a solid plus eight with the Vegas Golden Knights. His discipline to not be that much in the penalty box, less than 10 penalty minutes for your Vegas Golden Knights. And Pavel Dorofiev kept the energy and the hustle on the middle six and really earned a roster spot. And this is going to be a guy who, you know, he's a restricted free agent. He'll be an RFA this upcoming offseason. But if he does not get, as long as something crazy does not happen, I will be very surprised if Pavel Dorofiev does not become an everyday 82-game player for your Vegas Golden Knights in 2024, 2025. And unlike... Bryson, unlike Korzak, who are still going to spend some time being in the AHL for next year, I can confidently say that next season, Pavel Dorofiev will not be on the top prospect list 
for 2024-2025. He has graduated. He has moved his uh, tassel over from left to right. He has tossed his hat in the air, and he is now a graduate from the prospect system of the Vegas Golden Knights, the only one to have graduated from the top prospect, but not the only one that is going to leave. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, Pavel Dorofiev, congratulations to him. I am happy to see the fact that Pavel Dorofiev is now an now going to be an everyday guy in the NHL, and he is now going to be a Golden Knights member for the foreseeable future. So before we get into the top three here, we're going to go back over the list one more time. So how did the top 10 prospects perform in 2023, 2024? At number 10 was defenseman Joe Fleming from the Savannah Ghost Pirates. He had 21 points in around 100 penalty minutes in the ECHL. He did a really stellar job in the ECHL. At number 9 is Danny Chaka from the Henderson Silver Knights in the AHL. And despite playing 58 games, only registered 5 points in Henderson. We're interested to see what happens next year with him, be the former second-round pick. At number 8, you have a third-round pick in R2 Karki, who being in the AHL, he averaged a little under a point per game, 45 points for the Sioux Greyhounds of the Ontario Hockey League. He has a bright future ahead of him, and I'm looking forward to seeing his potential heading into next year. At number seven, you have Brendan Bryson. He split time between the NHL and the AHL and had his best productive season in his major professional career at this point in time. Now, it'll be interesting to see what he does next year, but he had a solid year in 2023-2024. Speaking of a solid season, Caden Korzak, the defenseman, former second-round pick, in the NHL and the AHL. He actually did a really good job placing Shea Theodore in the starting lineup in the NHL and then being a good pairing in the AHL. At number five, you had from the Ontario Hockey League, Mateus Sapaleev, who had over a point per game and registered 62 points in the Ontario Hockey League for the Saginaw Spirits. So overall, really solid job and I would not be shocked if he moves over to the minor leagues for next year and gets a gig in the AHL or ECHL. And at number four is a graduate from the Prospect Watch, and that is Pavel Dorothea from the Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, he had a very solid rookie season, and he has graduated and has eventually moved on to become an everyday starter in the NHL and be a member of your Vegas Golden Knights. Now, the top three prospects from the beginning of the year. Now, you have one prospect who was a bit underwhelming, but has some good upside. You had a prospect who didn't even have a chance to be a Vegas Golden Knight. And then you had a prospect at number three who hit a home run. All right, he hit a 100-mile-an-hour slap shot. This is the best prospect the Vegas Golden Knights had this year. At number three, Matthew Chatterford. And he came from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He came from the Halifax Mooseheads. And what an incredible season Matthew Chatterford had for Vegas. In 65 games playing in junior hockey, he racked up. 40 goals in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. He racked up 50 assists. And Matthew Chatterford this season had 90 points in 65 games. I mean, he had plus 43, plus minus. And he even found a way to make productive penalties and defend his teammates as he racked up around 30 penalty minutes in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. To say that Matthew Chatterford made an impact would be an understatement. Matthew Chatterford was the MVP. He was the best prospect that your Vegas Golden Knights had this season. And you know what? When it comes to Matthew Chatterford, this is his 
third and maybe final season playing in the in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. If I had to speculate, I would not be surprised if just like I said for Matea Sapaleev at number five, I will not be surprised if Matthew Chatterford earns his promotion and starts his minor league career in the AHL or in the ECHL to begin next year. Because I think when you have scored 90 points in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, it is time for you to be promoted. There is a time for you to eventually earn that very well and respected promotion to be a major hockey league player and be in the AHL and be in the ECHL. I mean, wow, what an incredible season that Chatterford had. And uh, he is the prospect MVP. If I had to put one up here, if I had to say there was a prospect MVP, Matthew Chatterford would be on that list. What an incredible year for him. Now, we only have two left. We had the two best prospects entering the year. And at number two was a first-round pick from 2023. David Edstrom came from Team Sweden. David Edstrom was a player who was drafted and was was expected to play an entire season in the Swedish Hockey League before being sent over to North America and play in the minors for 2024-2025. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is there no stats next to his name? Why is it that there is no information. There's really nothing about this guy next to his name. Well, the reason for that is that David Edstrom was traded at the 2024 NHL trade deadline by your Vegas Golden Knights. He was sent to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for Tomas Hurdle. So because David Edstrom was dealt at a trade deadline, he will now be crossed out from the top prospect list because he is no longer a Vegas Golden Knight. So, David Edstrom, he is not going to be on the team uh, for next year. Palo Dorofiev, he graduated from the NHL. He'll not be on the list next year. And I will not be surprised if Danny Chaka, despite his second-round pick a couple of years ago, he would be taken off the list as well. So with all of that, it leads with your final and your top prospect entering the year, your best prospect in 2023-2024, and that was defenseman Lucas Cormier. Lucas Cormier, who made his NHL debut for the Vegas Golden Knights back in January, he suited up and played 57 games between the NHL and the AHL. And in those 57 games, he had 19 points in his season. Now, for him being the top prospect and being the best prospect entering the year, there was a lot of expectations on him. There was a lot of hype entering Lucas Cormier entering the season. Unfortunately, he did not meet some of those expectations. As a matter of fact, when it came to Lucas Cormier, some can say that he kind of underachieved in the AHL this year considering that he had 35 points in 2022-2023, to him to only have 19 points is a bit of a downer with Lucas Cormier. So when it comes to Lucas Cormier, next year he has not played enough NHL games. He will still be a top prospect for your Vegas Golden Knights, but it will be interesting to see where he is ranked, considering how great Chatterford did, considering what Sepaleyev is going to do and what Korzak and Bryson accomplished between the NHL and the AHL at that point. So this is Vegas Hockey Hub. I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. This was another great edition of Vegas Hockey Hub. And until next time, continue watching hockey, go support junior hockey, and hey, go Knights, go. PR Connections Radio thanks you for watching this podcast. Check out more episodes of this show and our others at prconnectionsradio.com.
Thank you.